morning. Let's go straight to the morning papers. I'm joined this morning by Tom Spencer, founder of the London New Liberals and political commentator with Young Voices UK. Tom, good morning to you. Morning, James. Many thanks uh, for helping us go through the morning papers. Uh, Let's start with uh, COP26, of course, and the Queen pictured in many of the front pages. Mm, It's always great to see the uh, pomp and uh, circumstance that comes whenever the uh, whenever we hold a big uh, a conference and although it's uh, disappointing not to see her there in person I think it's really great to see her looking quite healthy looking great and doing a, re- a really good job in helping um, helping um, our uh, decarbonisation amb- uh, ambitions move forward. And other members of the royal family also getting involved uh, there's also comment uh, from other members as well. Mm, yeah, so we've seen um, Prince William and uh, Prince Charles. Uh, they've both been long-term uh, fantastic environmental uh, campaigners. And so um, Prince Charles has done a rather good speech. And in the Queen's speech as well, she gave an excellent uh, testimony to her late husband, the Duke of Edinburgh. And I think the royal family at the moment are just doing an utterly great job, as they always do. Well, Tom, you've been doing all the hard work this morning, going through the morning papers, so help me out here. What are the general angles and views? I mean, do the papers generally go with the same line or do they have a different take on the COP26 story? I think overnight we've seen some of the most positive stories that have come out of COP. I think initially people were quite sceptical of how much progress could be made, but the uh, deforestation deal that was made um in the late hours of last night has meant that now um, 85% of global uh, forests um, are now effectively uh, protected in a deal to basically end uh, deforestation in the next 10 years. Um, this includes countries like Brazil, Russia, Canada, which are the really important people we need to get on board if we're to end uh, deforestation uh, properly. And the Financial Times had a really good story um, in that India have have now promised to reach um, net zero by 2070. So although that's not the perfect 2050 target, which I think most other countries have committed to, the fact that they are now committed to uh, decarbonisation represents a really big change. And it is really optimistic to hear that we are actually taking it seriously and actually making the deals which needed to be done. Yeah, because I suppose, Tom, up to now, we've heard a lot from world leaders, almost as if they're needing to defend themselves. They have this platform, they're going on, telling us about everything that they're doing. But at some point, they're going to have to unite. I mean, and like the deforestation agreement, they're going to have to put pen to paper and sign agreements. Mm, Yeah, so although the big global agreements are a great thing, and we are seeing this um, through the uh, deforestation agreement. I I think many people are very sceptical of how effective these sorts of uh, conferences are, because the last one um, in Madrid, I believe, was pretty widely believed to be a uh, failure. Um, We didn't really have the Americans properly engaging. Thankfully, now we have a new uh, president who's more devoted to these sorts of questions. And... um, I think the world leaders are actually doing quite a good job at the moment. Let's uh, take a look at some of the other stories. A story in The Times this morning. We were talking uh, quite extensively yesterday about the train crash near Salisbury. Some more details emerging and The Times are reporting that a baby was among those rescued from the train wreckage. Mm, Yeah, Uh, so there was a report that a three-week-old baby was um, one of those involved in, in the crash and it's, it's always a very scary story when you read incidents like this um i think it does definitely a very 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 thorough investigation because things like this just shouldn't happen and they don't really happen so um this uh, story involving the baby as well as the injury sustained to the driver as well as quite a few other of of the passengers it tell us that something very, very, very wrong has happened here and we do need to properly find out what's caused it to make sure it doesn't ever happen again. And there's one other story uh, featured in a number of the morning papers, but I'm going to go with the Daily Mail headline on this one, MPs brakes on smart motorways. Tell us more. Mm, so um, since the smart motorway system has had been rolled in, there have been lots and lots of fears over the, over the safety 
in involved in that. The issue is um, because they don't have hard shoulders to help increase the flow of traffic going through them. Um, if someone breaks down, then there's not always a place to uh, pull over for, for safety. I think those things only appear every 1.6 uh, miles. And because of that, I believe the death rates are a third higher on smart uh, motorways than they are on, on normal ones. And it's, it's not surprising that this is the case because they're the very good um, undercover investigation done by the Daily Mail about a month ago, which found, I think, 10% of the CCTV cameras aren't actually working. And when you can't monitor if a car is crashing, you can't properly adapt the motorway to the different speed limit to ensure it is safe. And so when we're seeing all these issues, it only makes sense um, to recommend a pause in uh, at a rollout. So I think the Transport uh, Select Committee have got this absolutely right. Uh, Tom Spencer, thank you very much uh, for your time. Is this your debut doing the newspapers or have you done that with Callum before? Um, I've done it once with Callum. OK, well, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much. Founder of the London New Liberals and political commentator with Young Voices UK, that's Tom Spencer, helping us go through the morning papers.